In this lecture, we're going to introduce our next big idea, obviously similar, uh, similar figures. We're going to focus on similar triangles. And this is the basis of a good chunk of the, re uh, the next few units, actually, uh, which will kind of segue into things like trig and trig ratios and, and all that. Right. So as we look at this figure here, and we ask a question from something that we've covered before, you know, are the triangles below congruent? Well, obviously, they miss on a pretty important idea of this idea of congruent, right? If we remember that congruent means same size and shape, it definitely, the triangle ABC and DEF don't exactly line up when it comes to the size part. But if we look at the information that was provided to us, there is something that, uh, there are things that are the same. Uh, and clearly we have the angles all line up. The angles are, are, are paired up as, as congruent as the marks would tell you. So A is congruent to D, B is congruent to E, and C is congruent to F. And which is a great example of why angle, angle, angle does improve congruence uh, because angles determine the shape, but side lengths determine the size. So when we're looking at this and saying, well, are they congruent? No, they're not. But they're there is something going on here. And if we, we pay a little, go back to the sides again, and we say, we take a look at the corresponding sides. So AB corresponds to DE, and BC to EF, and AC to DF. And if we look at the side lengths in triangle ABC, and then we look at their corresponding side lengths in DEF, it's, you might notice that they are half. Right? ABC's lengths are half those of DEF. So there's, there's, while there's not congruence, um, there is something going on here. There does seem to be some sort of relationship going on. And as you can probably figure out, they are what we call in the, in the business similar. And we can, we can kind of steal the quick working definition of congruent uh, and modify it just a little to define similar, which is two, simil two figures are similar if they have the same shape but different size. That's a very quick definition. There are certain conditions that have to be met to make that the case, but uh, if, you can, if you remember that congruent is same size and shape, you can remember that similar is same, si same shape, different size. Still a quick well, for, forward definition of, you know, working definition. More specifically, if we're talking about the same shape, it means the corresponding angles in similar figures are equal. That's what makes things the same shape if they are equal in the, the all the corresponding angles are equal. And that's usually pretty easy to determine because well, they just, they are, they aren't. What might require just a little bit of math, and this is why we started, uh, we, we've led off this unit with a uh, lecture on proportions. When we're talking about the side lengths, the side length, corresponding side lengths in similar figures are proportional. Now, in this case here, we can look at it two ways. Uh, you can say, uh, we can look at what's called the, the, the similarity ratio, which is the ratio formed by the corresponding sides, as either large to small or small to large. I, I, just for the sake of the notes, I picked ABC is similar, and that one little squiggle, I think it's called, a, a might be called a tilde in, in Spanish, the, the one little squiggle uh, would indicate that ABC is similar to DEF with a similarity ratio of one half. Because we're comparing ABC, the small to the large, it's 10 over 20, 6 over 12, 7 over 14. Now what's important to note is all of the sides 
all of the corresponding sides have to have the same similarity ratio. It can't just be 10 to 20, then 6 to 18, and so on and so forth. You know, they all have to be the same. They all have to be the same. And you could have reversed that and said that DEF is similar to ABC with the similarity ratio of 2 if you reverse the, the, the statement. Okay. We've got some similarity conjectures in the same way that we have uh, congruence conjectures, and they're actually pretty similar. Uh, so you want to really be careful what you're trying to say when you're using these because some of them do overlap. When we're looking at this one here, we've got statement about two angles, which in reality we have a statement about three angles because we have to know that L and R are also congruent if the other two are. And the, the question is, is it similar? If I was asking, are they congruent, you wouldn't have enough information. But since you're, or I'm asking, are they similar, we can say, yes, they are because of angle-angle similarity. Where it doesn't work with congruence, it does work with similarity. If two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in another, then the triangles are similar. Um, and because we know L and R have to be congruent because for the, for the totals to equal 180. So angle-angle is a similarity conjecture, but not a congruence conjecture. All right, so if you know two angles are similar, then you can, uh, are, 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 I'm sorry, proportional, I'm sorry, the same, oh, I'm getting there, um, then they are, the triangles themselves are similar. Um, we look at the sides. We can say, okay, well, just like we'd had before, we had information about the side lengths, uh, we don't have any statements about the angles, but is it enough now to say that they are similar? So we look at the side lengths. We have to make that conclusion that they're proportional or not. And if we look at all the lengths in triangle ABC and compare them to all the lengths in DEF, we can see that once again, it's not always going to be the case, but that the smaller one is half the larger uh, Sides. So this is side, side, side similarity. And if three sides in one triangle are proportional to the corresponding sides in another, then the triangles are similar. It doesn't matter which way you go, whether you set up the proportion of small to large or large to small. That doesn't matter. What, it, what does matter is that all three of the proportions that you create are the same. So when you, you don't just check one pair of corresponding sides, you got to check all of them. So side, side, side similarity. And this is one that cause that this works for both congruence and similarity. So make sure you are using the right one in the right situation. You can't look at that and say they're congruent, but you can look at that picture and say they are similar. And then um, are they similar here? Again. This is one that matches up with the congruence one, so just pay attention. Um, and this is side angle side because the angle, uh, the included angle, um, are congruent, and the sides that form them are proportional as well. So this is again side angle sides, just like before. That angle is is formed by the sides that, in this case, are proportional. Um, so triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. We still name things the same way. We still want to, in our name, when we name the, the triangles, the proportional sides have to be in the same place in the name and all that. Uh, so the, the, there's a lot of similarities to what we did in congruence to what we did in, in uh, what we are going to do in similarity. So I think just a couple more slides after this. Um, and so you can kind of get a sense of what the problems might look like. Are the triangles below, um, I'm meaning to say, I see I already caught myself, uh, this should read, uh, I'll, I'll fix it right now. Uh, this should be similar. They're ask, I'm asking if they're similar, not congruent. I know they're not congruent. A, B, C, and D, E, F. Obviously, they're not congruent. They're not the same size. But could they be um, 
similar. Well, don't get fooled and say, oh, they don't have enough information. It cannot be determined. We know that B and E are congruent, and we also know that you've got angle C in both of them, meaning C is congruent to itself. That's the reflexive property. So you've both of the triangles have angle C in them. So yeah, they are similar because of angle angle, okay? because of the angle angle conjecture. When, they, when you've kind of got a triangle kind of almost like sitting on top of what it or it's kind of crammed into it, however you want to look at that as two different triangles there, uh, pay attention to the names, pay attention to what sides and angles they have in common, and you might, be able, you might have more information than is necessarily marked uh, as congruent. So these are, these are uh, similar because they are uh, because of angle angle. We do not have enough to come up with anything like a similarity ratio because we don't have any side lengths. Um, are the triangles below similar? Okay, so we've got, obviously they're not congruent because one is very large and one is very small. So that we can eliminate that without knowing anything. Um, but do we have enough information to determine if they are similar? Well, we do have an angle in common. Again, just like before, we want to put all the information we can in. We can say that this angle and this angle are congruent because they're vertical angles. So we know that angle N in both triangles are um, are congruent because they're vertical angles. So we've got an angle in common. We don't have any other angles, but we do have sides. So LM, I'm going to check LM. Um, I'm sorry, LN, really. Uh, we don't have uh, LM. But we have LN, and compare that to JN and MN to NK because that's what the names indicate. So we're going to look at those. We're going to say compare MN to NK, and that's going to be 15 over 3, which gives us 5. And then when I compare LN to NJ, that's going to be 5 as well. The angles are the same, so these triangles are similar because of side, angle, side. This is a have-to situation, right? When, you are, when you're talking about... Um, determining if things are congruent, this is something you need to show, right? Show that so that you can see that the ratios are the same. And I think that might be the, oh no, there's one more, right? But again, this is another one, find the value of x. I didn't put the screen up on this one, so you just kind of see it in action. That's okay, right? We know we've got congruent angles. We don't have to check that, but we do have to compare 15.6 to 12 and then 13 to 10. In both cases, we get the same value. That proves that they are similar. So we've determined they're similar. We haven't been told they're similar. We're just asking to find the value of x. Once you then have that, once you have that established, then you can just take one of them. I picked 13 tenths, just as, as one of the ratios, because it tends easier to work with, and compared it to 6.5 over x. Again, what did I do when I set up this proportion? I set up large over small length, right? DEF is the larger of the two triangles, so I set up 13 over 10. I could have set 15.6 over 12 if I wanted and compared it to 6.5 over x, the larger of the remaining sides over the smaller. I could have flipped the numerator and the denominator here. It still would have gotten me to this, this, this statement there. 13x is equal to 65, which gives me an x value of 5. Right? And that, that, I believe, is the last slide. And there it is. Yes, it is. So. Um, we're going to be doing a fair bit with uh, similar stuff here, um, and we're going to expand this into uh, our, our right triangle trig, trig relationship. So that will be uh, forthcoming. As uh, but we want to get really good with this. We want to understand how to solve for how to prove if things are similar. 
obviously we're going to be talking about proofs at some point because if we're proving things similar, um, that's that's going to be something that we're going to we're going to be hitting at some point. Um, but we're also going to expand this out to trig later on. We'll have plenty of practice when I get back. Um, hope this helped. Please let me know if you have any questions.